Right in 2014, when Mike Brown was murdered by the police and the Black Lives Matter movement started gaining popularity, Palestinians on Twitter were sharing tips on how to avoid tear gas. Sure Look, did. if you're a, de a democracy of any kind, it is imperative. I repeat, it is imperative to use chemical weapons deemed illegal by the Geneva Conventions on dissenting <laughs> citizens. That's that's just democracy 101, you guys. That's do you guys remember that part of the Declaration of Independence uh, where it said yeah, chemical weapons? <laughs> yeah, it's a it was small print. They wrote it in small print, but we found it. We found it. <laughs> but their solidarity with Palestinians made BLM a target for Israel. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Hey, you guys might notice that uh, you, you, you hear a little bit of laughter in the background of these uh, of these videos, of the Forkful of Noodles videos, and that's because these videos were recorded in front of a live virtual audience. That's right. I perform these, these shows over Zoom in front of a virtual audience that uh, laughs and participates through the show and it's a really fun time and if you uh, want to be a part of that show you totally can you can go to my website krishmohanhaha.com and snag tickets for these shows i do them once a month on the last friday of every month at 8 p.m eastern at 5 p.m pacific they're ten dollars but if ten dollars is a little bit too much if you're struggling financially and you still want to come check out this show that's not a problem uh reach out to me send me an email dm me on twitter send me a message on facebook various different ways you can communicate with me let me know that you want to check out the show and, and you've hit some financial hard times and i will get you a free code for the show so you can come hang out enjoy a, 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 a comedy show that addresses issues that you won't hear on corporate mainstream media uh and 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 be around some like-minded wonderful people uh so again if you go to my website krishmohanhaha.com you can snag your tickets and join the live virtual comedy shows that happen every single month thank you guys so much and enjoy this video the question is how do we support the the people of palestine from the apartheid state that they're living under. First of all, just by paying attention at, to and sharing the work of pro-Palestinian journalists, you're helping combat propaganda. But another major way to fight back is to be a part of the Boycott, Sanctions, and Divestment Movement, or BDS. Okay, so I'm, I'm realizing now, like, if you add the word movement to it, it does become BDSM, which is something very different. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could do BDSM for Palestine, but I, I'm would... not, I'm not sure I'm the right person to figure out the logistics of that. Okay, be a great like... fundraising idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not the right. Look, nobody needs to see a Fifty Shades of Krish situation. All right, <laughs> including myself, I bruise very easily. <laughs> I stepped out of bed and broke three vertebrae. So, oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm not in good shape. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was a joke. Everybody got way too worried about that. <laughs> I'm not that brittle, you guys. <laughs> BDS was started by African-American grassroots organization that grew at college campuses to make South Africa not an apartheid state. And it was successful. So when this same tactic was used by pro-Palestinian students, student groups across the nation in the States, the infamous Israel lobby came back to strike against the students. Basically, they went to these campuses with their corporate infiltrators and said, change my mind. Yeah. It's, it's always nice to see full grown adults try to put down children who have just figured out how to do their laundry for the first time. <laughs> The Israel lobby is the Steven Crowder of geopolitics. Very niche joke. Thank you to the one person that got it. <laughs> Appreciate <Not me>. that. <laughs> uh, just imagine the largest piece of shit 
that you could ever think of and then uh, make it twice as big, and that's Steven Crowder. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this man wears a gun holster during his live streams because you just never know. He's a huge piece of shit, and I hate him very much. Uh, <laughs> now, one of the campaigns that the lobby started was redefining anti-Semitism. This was defined as someone who had a scathing hatred for the Jewish people, so scathing that they wanted to violently attack them. One famous anti-Semite was a, a, a young chap by the name of uh, Adolf Hitler. Some might say he was the anti-Semite. But the State Department deems anti-Semitism as anyone that demonizes Israel and delegitimizes the Israel state. Wow. Uh, so I guess in this context, history is anti-Semitic. And with this redefinition, it doesn't make Hitler an anti-Semite. Because Israel wasn't a thing when Hitler was around. He'd, he didn't know about it. Now, the redefinition is why we think Judaism is under attack when Israel is criticized or cited for war crimes. The other part is the fact that Israel's flag is the Star of David. They nationalized a religious symbol to claim that they're a Jewish state only for Jews. I mean, it's fun, right? It's fun when graphic design can be used for ethnic cleansing, you know? That's why I got into it. That's why I got my degree in graphic design, because I was like, what's going to let me be creative, but also cleanse people ethnically? That's very important for me to get a degree in that. Think tanks like The Israel Project or TIP are used in conjunction with groups like APAC to lobby politicians to create pro-Israeli and anti-BDS laws. The goal is to make every congressman an agent of Egypt, uh, Israel. Now, the max you can donate to a candidate is $2,700. So in order to get around that, TIP and APAC will throw big parties and have everyone there donate. So by the end of it, they've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for just this one candidate. Right? Democracy! Wait, that doesn't sound right. Kleptocracy! <laughs> there we go. That did it. By the way, am I am I doing parties wrong? Because usually at my parties, like we get a little drunk, a little stoned, <laughs> right? And sure, yeah, we talk geopolitics, but no one's taking money from each other, <laughs> unless it's for pizza. Never. Holy shit, guys! I did. I, do I work for the pizza lobby? Is that <laughs> that, that that's an issue for another time? Look, and if politicians don't want to side with Israel. They get the scorn of the Jewish American communities in America, right? Which was the case for Congressman Jim Moran. In 2002, APAC was lobbying Moran to vote for the invasion of Iraq. The executive director of uh, APAC said that his <coughs> most important accomplishment was securing the authorization for the use of US military force in Iraq. APAC was pushing it very hard. Why does APAC benefit from the United States going to war. The United States getting involved in wars in the Middle East is ultimately in Israel's interest, because we have a stake in the region. Congressman Moran refused to vote for the invasion, as APAC requested. There are compelling, fundamental reasons why this body should oppose this resolution. Then at a public meeting, he was asked a question. A Jewish woman actually stood up in the town hall and she said uh, why aren't more Jews involved in the marches against the war I said if the leaders of the Jewish community were opposed to the war I think that would make a difference the lobby reacted claiming this was evidence of Moran's belief in a Jewish conspiracy that was leading America to war there was a conservative rabbi in my district who was assigned to me I assume by APAC and he had warned me that if I voice my views about the Israeli lobby that my career would be over and implied that it would be done through the Post. And sure enough, the, the Washington Post editorialized brutally. Everybody ganged up. Hmm. 
Moran claims the Washington Post's editorial board has a close relationship with APAC. The principal editorial board of the Post itself has been a very effective instrument because they've been able to maintain their credibility. And, and it's a great paper in every other way. But because they have such credibility, they're extremely effective. Everyone knew he was an anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitism has come to mean anti-Israel. The APAC crowd doesn't really care very much about whether or not a person likes Jews or wants one to move next door. All they care about is what their position is on Israel. Both of my daughters married Jewish men. My grandchildren are Jewish. Anybody that considers me anti-Semite is ignorant. Also, the Washington Post is a trash paper. Okay, uh, moving on. <laughs> In 2015, Tennessee passes an <laughs> anti-BDS law, which equates the movement with anti-Semitism. This is just like saying Black Lives Matter is a racist organization fighting for the freedom of all people. Okay, look, this is the last time I'm going to say this, but if that didn't make sense to you, it's because you're not letting the State Department do your thinking for you. Come on! <laughs> The goal for groups like TIP is also to attack college students, smearing them enough to prevent them from getting a job. A group associated with TIP called Stand With Us did this to Samaya Din at UC Berkeley when she was running for college senate. Sumaya so used the slogan hashtag Dintifada for her campaign and Stand With Us used targeted social media ads to have pro-Israeli trolls attack this girl and they sent her death threats pretty much on a daily basis. Now, a lot of the pages sending her these threats were not publicly associated with Stand With Us uh, because they have a bad reputation within the Jewish community for being too extreme, right? Go figure, attacking an innocent Muslim college student makes you unlikable as a multi-million dollar organization. I mean, gee willikers, who would have thunk it? But the key to these lobbies is to keep their anonymity. They're like the, the Moriarty of human rights violations. And holy fuck, I cannot wait for them to plummet over a waterfall. Is that too specific of a literary reference for people? I thought this was like a really good joke, but it got fucking nothing. I wrote that and I was like, oh, that's gonna, that's gonna kill with the, with the reading crowd and then <laughs> the fact that that joke didn't get any fucking laughs makes me want to burn down a library but I'm not going to <laughs> I'm just not going to watch Robert Downey Jr.'s Sherlock Holmes movies anymore that's, that's, all, that's all that means sorry <laughs> to, 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 I like that somebody apologized it's very nice of you <laughs> Look, Tip also took part in astroturfing, and this is when you pay fake protesters to yell obscene and extreme things in the face of real protesters, right? Tip paid a bunch of people to go on campuses and scream at college Palestinian activists. And this yielded very few results, but they kept doing it to get exposure that there were, quote, grassroots Israel supporters, too. Now, BDS just kept growing in popularity. So in a desperate attempt, Israel recruited black South Africans to say that BDS doesn't work, even though it fucking did. Nobody talks about the reason why BDS exists at all. What's the model for the BDS movement? The model is South Africa. So was that a bad thing to do? An apartheid regime which denied equal rights to black South Africans was weakened and ultimately collapsed after a global economic and political boycott. They're worried that the BDS movement will get to the stature that the South Africa boycott got to. So they're trying to stop it now. Imagine if the apartheid regime of the Clare were able to have a lobby in America that it was a crime to support the, that, that boycott. Imagine that. In order to discredit the apartheid label, the lobby has launched a campaign to try to co-opt black South Africans. Black South Africans, 
who were apartheid activists, who were brought to Israel, saw the reality, came home angry at BDS. They felt lied to. They felt that there, someone had tried to steal their narrative. This is an effective tool, bringing these black South African former BDS activists, now Israel supporters, to American campuses. I don't like the way that gentleman says the word black. Uh, moving on. <laughs> but look, this this can very easily be shown as a manipulative effort since Israelis don't particularly care about black people. Right in 2014, when Mike Brown was murdered by the police and the Black Lives Matter movement started gaining popularity, Palestinians on Twitter were sharing tips on how to avoid tear gas. Sure Look, did. if you're a, de a democracy of any kind, it is imperative, I repeat, it is imperative to use chemical weapons deemed illegal by the Geneva Conventions on dissenting <laughs> citizens. That's, that's just democracy 101, you guys. That's... Do you guys remember that part of the Declaration of Independence uh, where it said yeah, chemical weapons? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it was small print. They wrote it in small print, but we found it. We found it. <laughs> but their solidarity with Palestinians made BLM a target for Israel. Not only that, but killer cops are trained by the IDF who show them moves <laughs> like sitting on someone's neck until they die and how to choke out a person till they die but we don't have to we could go even further back in history right during the sixth zionist congress the zionists were in talk with england to acquire land in uganda and kenya and call it the jewish homeland i guess i guess these guys really wanted to be like the og apartheid oppressors you know but look this philosophy shows that zionism was rooted in land grabs and imperialism it also shows us that it really didn't matter where the Jewish homeland was, just so they had one. And it didn't really matter who gets stomped out of there to get one. Even more glaring is what happened to Ethiopian Jews. When they arrived in Israel, Ethiopian Jews were discriminated against constantly. They were victims of police brutality and more often than not live in impoverished neighborhoods. Is it, is it really a wonder that the United States, with its racist history, is such dear and close friends with Israel. I mean, races of a feather really need to stick together, don't they? Mm. <laughs> now, in Uganda, the Jewish population practiced a very formal and orthodox version of the religion. These Jews were considered outsiders and therefore not allowed in Israel. Only Caucasian Jews were seen as worthy of the homeland. So if you look at the history of black people and Israel globally, you can see that having black South Africans shit on BDS is nothing but propagandistic nonsense. It's basically Israel saying they have black friends. <laughs> but, but those black friends aren't really welcome in their homes. You know? Things got so bad that Tip really had to dig deep to pal smear Palestinians. So they came up with a story that Hamas was digging tunnels underground to come up into Israel and kill Israeli children and eat all their cookies. I visited the Israeli side of the border with Gaza and can tell you the tension there is palpable. Hamas leaders have stated that they are aggressively expanding their underground labyrinth of tunnels. This won't help. The safe room won't protect you from Not a tunnel from attack. Not from that. It's a very compelling report, but it's based on an absolute lie. And there are even reports from some residents they are hearing digging underground. The premise of the report is that Palestinians are digging tunnels in order to come up into the bedrooms of Israeli children and to kidnap them or kill them or terrorize them. For those living close to Gaza, it seems only a matter of time before it happens again. It keeps me awake at night. There isn't one recorded case of these tunnels being used to attack Israeli civilians. The report was presented solely from one side. The Israel Defense Forces say the average Hamas tunnel is three kilometers, nearly two miles, costing wow. millions of dollars and tons of valuable concrete resources badly needed by the long-suffering people of Gaza to rebuild their cities. I think we learned 
uh, something really, really important uh, from that report, right? Because, I mean, the official narrative from the Israel Project is that Hamas and the Palestinians are the newest members of the Looney Tunes cartoon family. Yeah. These guys were losing so much support that the only place that they could find new propaganda ideas was from fucking Bugs Bunny, right? Which would make the Israelis Elmer Fudd who constantly loses. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm super pumped to see Hamas in the new Space Jam remake. Huh? <laughs> Look, the point of the Israel lobby is to control politicians, the narrative, and shape public discourse. Since the brand of Israel be has become so toxic, the lobby has gone with a little bit more of a softer approach, right? They create proxy Facebook pages to show pictures of girl power and kittens and puppies and then every so often a pro-Israel meme. But once, but the, after these recent attacks, the discourse is changing very drastically about Israel and even the lobby is having a hard time keeping up with their own bullshit. Right now, only 32% of Jews in America feel like they have a close attachment to Israel. And once you look beyond the identity politics and start paying attention to history and the war crimes, it's hard to say that Israel is the victim in the nonstop war. They're a discriminatory bunch of imperialists who support white supremacist ideologies. Odd, since that's what the Jewish people were fighting against in World War II. Look, Israel is not connected to Judaism. That's a, a manufactured perspective. The real victims in all of this are the Palestinian people. Average people who want to live in their homes, live their lives without the constant fear of rocket attacks. That is not a big ask. I mean, Palestinians were happy to share their lands with the Jews, not be colonized by them. So if this is really about human rights, then we must do what's best for the Palestinian people. We must boycott, sanction, and divest from Israel. It's really not that complicated. The end. Thank you, guys. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. But if you enjoyed this video, uh, please make sure you hit the like button. Please make sure you hit the share button and get the word out because that's how independent media thrives. That's how independent media gets the word out there. Uh, share it with your friends. Share it with your enemy. Share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this kind of stuff uh, that is woefully uninformed about the happenings around the world. Uh, that sharing is a, is a huge way that you, that you can help and it costs you literally nothing. It costs you literally nothing. But if you're saying, hey, Krish, I really enjoy your stuff and I want to financially contribute to your your, your, your videos and your podcasts and, and your comedy, how can I do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to virtual comedy shows, bonus stand-up comedy content. You get to ask me questions uh, that I will respond to in, in video form that will become um, you know member-exclusive videos. Uh, you get a ton of cool stuff by becoming a sustaining member. You can also make a one-time donation as well. Uh, you can d uh, download uh, my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, you can also get merch. You can uh, you can buy T-shirts or mugs or uh, die-cut stickers, hoodies, that sort of stuff. And all of this stuff is available directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. And if you get the merch, uh, there is a, a, a Julian Assange design that I made, and all of the pro all of the profits I make from that, I'm going to be donating to pro-Assange activists and pro-Assange journalists like Action for Assange, Kevin Gasola, Richard Medher, so on and so forth. There's tons of amazing people out there that cover Julian Assange, that talk about what's going on with him, and I want to make sure that they are supported. So uh, by purchasing those shirts, you not only get to spread awareness of, about Assange, but you also get to help support people that are amplifying his voice, his message, and his story. 
And uh, last but not least, if you want to be part of these virtual comedy shows that happen every single month on the last Friday of every single month, you can go to my website and grab tickets for the next one right now. Do it right now. Sometimes we have special guests on the show, and it's awesome, and it's super fun. Uh, so you do not want to miss these shows, and it's always a good time to be surrounded by like-minded people. We do a little discussion at the end, uh, and it's a really, really fun time. Uh, and again, thank you guys for checking out this video. Thank you to everybody that supports this channel, has subscribed to the to my videos and podcasts that ha have contributed financially and have become sustaining members. I really appreciate it. Uh, every little bit helps uh, and every little bit um, helps me do this full time. So uh, I very much appreciate you guys. But till the next video, we'll see you soon. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>